by the time we complete our mission to build that Web3 staking application, you are going to master this, I am telling you. And trust me, what we are going to work with today is going to blow your mind. Let's go. Okay, so in the last video, we cover the claim button and we cover the verify button. So we have configured those two options in our staking application. So now users can claim the rewards and also verify how many tokens do they have stake on the application. We need to do a couple of things. One thing that we have to work with, we need to allow the staking smart contract to interact with our NFT assets. So on the last videos, we only interact with the wallet that was holding the NFTs, which I already set approval for all. So approval for all, it's the method or the function that we use to allow the staking smart contract to transfer those NFTs onto the vault. So now we need to code another button that allows the end user to approve the staking smart contract from transferring those NFTs either from the wallet to the vault or vice versa, from the vault to the wallet. So we have to work with that now. We're going to do one more thing and it's going to involve API. Why we want to use API here? Can you imagine if we can create a stake an unstake button and display each NFT on the Web3 DApp and on each NFT will have both the stake and unstake button. So an end user or an NFT holder sees that their NFT is listed, he can just literally click stake and boom, NFT will be staked on the vault. He can click unstake and he can remove the NFT from the staking vault. Way better than just telling the end user to pre, you know, to type the NFT ID onto a blank because the user might, might not even know what ID is, is their NFT, right? So we want to make this as simple as possible. On this video, we are going to create a loop that is going to iterate over an API call and list every single NFT asset onto the staking application website or the Web3 DApp. And on each NFT, it's going to auto create a stake and unstake button. So instead of us asking the NFT holder to input the token ID, he just needs to find, or she just needs to find the NFT that will be displayed on the app. And there should be a stake button and he can go ahead and stake it. Sounds way better than just putting a blank and you know doing it manually, right? That's what we want. We want everything to be seamless, to be easy to adapt to an end user because we want to have adoption. We want our end users to be engaged with the platform, to buy assets, to stake those assets as easy and simple as possible, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're going to do a quick cosmetic change into that website and we are going to create the enable staking button, which will basically trigger the set approval for all. So it's basically going to talk to the collection smart contract, not the staking smart contract, the NFT collection smart contract. It's going to talk to that collection smart contract and it's going to request on behalf of the user, hey, the staking smart contract wants to move the NFTs from this particular user wallet to the vault and it's going to ask for permission. So the end user needs to approve that call. So the staking smart contract can transfer those assets. What I'm going to do before we do that, I am going to purchase an NFT from another wallet and we're going to attempt to stake. You're gonna see the error. And then what we are going to do, we're going to create the button, we're gonna code it, we're going to enable it, and then we'll try it again. And you're gonna see that it's gonna work, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started. So in the last video, we configure the verify and claim rewards buttons. Now 
I want to show you something that I hope that you already tested this and I am pretty sure that you that you face this particular issue. So I'm going to connect my wallet, right? This wallet, I do know that I have an NFT on it because I use this wallet to mint the staking smart contract and I, I also told the collection smart contract to set approval for all. So I know that I should not have any problems staking from this wallet. The problem is the following. I am going to change my wallet to another wallet. So in this case, I'm going to use a completely different wallet, okay? And we're going to try to connect. And now we are connected with a completely different wallet, okay? Now, what I want to do, I want to buy an NFT, right? So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to buy an NFT. I'm going to confirm. After I get the confirmation, I'm just waiting for it. Once I get the confirmation, I am going to try to stake it. But you're going to see that we're going to run into an issue. And the issue is, I need, as the holder of the NFT, I need to tell the collection smart contract, hey, I am approving the staking smart contract to transfer the NFTs from my wallet to the vault because that needs to be approved. How do we do that? We invoke the function called set approval for all. And we're going to see that right now. Okay. So let's see if uh, we got confirmation. One second. And we got confirmation because we got the mint right here. Awesome. Now I am wondering which NFT that we got, that we get. Okay. Which NFT did we get? But let me take a look here. And eight. So we got NFT number eight. And by the way, we need to fix all this. This is all duplicated and you're going to see why in a second. Okay. So let's first work with this okay so this will be nft8 that's the nft that i just bought using this particular wallet you know this new wallet okay so now i'm going to try to stake it and you're going to see the error okay so when i press 8 that will be the nft that i will like to stake and i want to press stake and guess what it's actually throwing me an error that is expecting to fail because there's something on the smart contract i know what it is is that this wallet it has not given approval to the collection smart contract to move the nfts from the wallet you need to tell the collection smart contract hey i am going i am giving you approval to allow the staking smart contract from transferring the tokens to the vault so you have to make sure that you set that but again our nft holders will not know how to do that through through remix that that's not what we are expecting from the holders we are just expecting them to hit a button and all the magic should happen on the back end let's go ahead and configure that okay so what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to reject this now let me go into into the remix compiler and i want to show you the function that we need to talk that we need to call under the collection, this is not the staking smart contract, it's the NFT smart contract, the normal ERC721 smart contract. Under that smart contract, we are going to set approval for all, okay? And I had this because I was doing some other testing, but we have to set approval for all. Here's the thing. I know how can I do it through Remix, but we <laughs> we're not looking for the end user to do this because uh, obviously you're not gonna even you're not going to have a single NFT state on your wall, trust me. Uh, okay, so what we need to do, we need to create a function in React that talks to set approval for all to the collection smart contract. Okay, so let's go ahead because we already know how to create functions and, and call those functions to a button. Okay, so let's go ahead and build that function. Okay, let me go on to my ID. Okay. So the first thing that I have to work with, it's the function, okay? And what are we going to invoke? We are going to invoke set approval for all, okay? We know, or you already know that I love to use copy and paste, okay? So I do have this already ready to go to save time, okay? So let me go ahead and get that. So what we want to do we want to enable the staking smart contract from transferring our nfts from the wallet to the vault so we are just going to create a function called enable and we're going to talk to the set approval for all function 
and we already went through this with the claim, the verify, the unstake, and stake. This is how you talk to the contract. You invoke the contract variable that was invoked when you first connected the wallet, right? So this is literally talking to this. This is the connection from Web3 to the blockchain so it can talk to the smart contract, okay? So what I need to do now, and I'm going to explain what this function will do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it right here, okay? So let's read the function. I am going to create a function called enable. What is that function going to do? That function is going to talk to which contract? It's not the staking smart contract or the vault contract variable. It's the NFT collection smart contract. How do we know that this is mapped to the NFT collection smart contract? Let's scroll up to the connect wallet function. Okay, and here we go. We got the contract, the contract it's calling using Web3 to talk to the Ethereum blockchain and invoke contract. It's going to look for the ABI, which we already pasted that ABI from the NFT smart contract. And it's going to request the address of the NFT collection smart contract. This is not the address for the vault. The vault, we have a different variable for this vault contract points to the staking contract address and this points to the nft contract so this is the one that we need to use to make that set approval for all call okay so let's go back down and obviously we use methods what's the name of that method set approval for all that's exactly what we see in remix we are just going to talk to that same one here okay what are we talking we are talking to the address of the collection and there is a, another, another parameter called true. Let's go back to Remix to see what, what this is all about. Let me go back to Remix, okay? And you can see operator, that is the what address? That is the staking smart contract address. We are going to give it approval for all. From where? From my wallet. I am going to tell the NFT smart contract, hey, I am the owner of my NFTs, please give access to the staking smart contract so it can transfer that to the vault. Approval, true, a Boolean, either true or false, we need to tell true. So we need to say, we need to say, hey, I am true. This is a true action, okay? So it will be the address of the NFT collection smart contract and true. And let's look again. What is the first entry? The address of the staking smart contract and the Boolean of true. And I am going to send that request from where? From my wallet. That's how I tell the collection smart contract, I, my address is giving you permission to allow the staking smart contract from transferring those NFTs to the vault. And that's it. All we have to do, and we got the function, now we need to create that button. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do now, I am going to scroll down and I want to place that button next to the connect wallet button. Okay, so I already got this pre-configured. Place it below here, below the connect wallet, and I am just gonna paste. Okay, so what is the name of that button? Enable staking. What am I calling? Enable, what's that? That's the function that I just created in React. The function is right here, okay? And you can now see that this has turned on or it's no longer gray, it's no longer grayed out, okay? Let's scroll down. And now we have another button below connect wallet. We should see another button once we save and it renders, we should see another button called enable staking. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it. Control S. Okay, now let me go back onto my React app. And there you go. That's the other button. That's the button that we just created. Now what we need to do, we need to set a little bit of margin here between the two. So let me go ahead and do that. Now, how can I do it? I can use this and I can tell the connect wallet button to have a, a little bit of margin to the right. Margin right. And when I press the colon and then let's set the item or the the margin to the uh, to the right and let's just use three pixels for now. Let me save it and let's see how that goes. Ah, not bad. 
actually we have a little bit of clearance there that should be fine okay so now i'm going to refresh and what we're going to do now we are going to again connect myself this is the wallet that is holding the nft number eight we are going to talk to the collection smart contract and ask for approval and sure enough what is being called set approval for all and i am actually talking this is the nft collection smart contract we're going to approve we're gonna wait for that confirmation boom and we got confirmation awesome now let's give it a shot let's see if we can stake and we don't see any errors in metamask token id number eight let's take ah mm, i like that huh confirm there you go that's it so now once the user connects his wallet he or she can hit the enable staking it's going to give the collection smart contract instructions to approve the staking smart contract to move those nfts onto the vault okay and boom now i should have the staked amount reflected there you go one because that's one nft that i have on the vault so we have successfully staked the nft that we just bought here not long ago okay cool now next thing we gotta do you know what what i'm gonna do i am going to change the background to black so it looks you know it looks a little bit nicer so what i'm gonna do i'm just going to call style background i know that there's ways to do it better but again i am not focusing in, in styling or css i am focusing on web3 s control s this is literally how you set a background on the app and let's go back there you go that's all you have to do okay okay next what we want to do this one is gonna be fun i am going to work a lot with api if you still don't understand how to do api calls and display the output in react i have a video of how to use axios to display data from etherscan the problem that we're seeing right now is that the data that i'm getting from etherscan it's showing not only the nfts it's also showing every single time that that nft has a transaction which is not ideal for this the staking application so what we want to see is just the single nft not this duplicated because this every time that this was staked it literally made a copy because this is literally a copy of etherscan this is what is showing on etherscan every time that you see some interaction with the nft it's just going to keep creating an entry keep creating an entry and it's not actually looking for the token id it's just looking for transaction id it's just going to continue 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 this is why we see everything all duplicated okay so what i want to do it's number one fix this how do i fix this i fix this by instead of talking to etherscan i'm still going to talk to etherscan you know why because i want to retrieve the amount of tokens and i think etherscan is doing its job to give me that information how many nfts am i minting or have i already minted out of the smart contract supply okay but listing the nfts i just want that unique nft listed because why because i am going to change this from buy now to stake and on stake i want to have two buttons here per nft so any any nft holder can look for his or her nft and boom and can stake it right from the asset it doesn't have to like input the id or anything like that which is kind of cumbersome okay so let me go ahead and do that the first thing i'm gonna go very quick because again api i cover that on another video in this particular video we just want to have the the functionality performed okay so what i would need to do i am going to talk to the open c api so for that the first thing i gotta do i gotta point to the open c api url okay so i'm gonna copy i already got it ready to go and this is and, and again i suggest if you don't know how to work with api calls i have two videos that i built using axios so i am working with axios this is exactly what i'm doing i'm just talking to openc through their api and you can read the notes or the documentation in openc so you can also get familiar how to do that but it's literally if you look at my video how to do api calls with etherscan you just need to apply it to openc okay and openc actually allows me to pull the data from the smart contract because they list every single nft 
asset under DAP, so I can actually use this API call to retrieve that information and use it myself, okay? Awesome, so I just got that. Now, next thing that I got to do, I am going to create or update the existing function that I have right here. So this function, what it was doing, this one, so this call is the one that is giving me the amount of tokens minted. So if we go back into the app, this value right here is being pulled from this particular API call. Now I need to get the token list or the list of NFTs as they are minted. Etherscan will do it, but then I have to work with some magic to make the filtering and only show one because every time that there is a transaction without token, it's just gonna keep duplicating on the side because I have a for loop or have a loop in, um, in JavaScript that basically it just reads every single line from the API call and then generates each unique uh, asset. But we don't want this. We actually want this to be just the one and only NFT listed one time, okay? So let me go ahead and do that. So what I wanna do, I'm just gonna do it very quick. I am going to copy the second call and I'm just gonna paste it right here. And again, there is documentation to do OpenSea uh, API call. If you, let me know, if you want to like learn how to do an OpenSea API call, please let me know in the comments and I'll just do a quick video how to, how to make it happen, okay? Not a problem at all. One thing that I have to make sure is that I am talking to the NFT contract and let me see, yeah, the NFT contract right here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to, this will be populating in this field, the contract address for the NFT collection, not the staking. This is not, this has nothing to do with the staking, okay? And uh, yeah, that looks good. Now what we need to do is we need to create that particular update so then it pulls the information correctly make sure that you're following along okay there's a lot of things we have to do the first thing we got to do is that now i have to make sure that per each each time that the api call sees that there's an unique entry in this case the token so every time that there is an entry in this case how many tokens do we have we have eight minted so far so it's going to loop eight times and it's going to generate each block eight times one per nft okay so and again go back onto axios the video that i did with axios which i literally coded this entire thing and you can see everything from scratch okay so what i'm going to do now i need to do two things is that if i want to stake and unstake okay let me show you back if i want to place a button for unstake and stake i have to make sure that every time that there is that the that the map runs and it goes over nft1 and nft2 and nft3 and nft4 and it, and it keeps creating those blocks it attaches the NFT or the token ID to the button so then the end user doesn't have to input the token ID, okay? So the way that I'm going to do that, it's by calling the token ID. I am pulling that data from OpenSea and I am attaching the number to the button. But for me to do that, I have to move the functions and render. I have to move the async functions for connect wallet for all that after render. Why? Because I need to move the stake and unstake functions inside the map, inside that loop that we're going to create. Because why? Because every time that is going to generate that block per NFT that has been minted, it's going to request the ID from the call. And the only way to have that ID is that it already got rendered in HTML, okay? So how I'm going to do that? Let's go back to and pay close attention to this, okay? So you see render here? Render is grabbing all the information from the Axios call and it's going and setting it in this set, in this set state 
pointing to the, the variable that is making the API call. So from there, I can gather all the details from the call itself and then invoke that in HTML. So then I can make the call and get the output that I want. But now, since I need to not only use the API call, but also use the Web3 function, I need to make sure that that function is rendered as well. How am I going to do that? Okay, the only thing that I have to do, I have to move every single function from being before the API call to after, okay? So right now we have just cut every single Web3 function and what we're going to do, we are going to paste this inside the render, okay? Boom, I have, you're following me. I just pasted all my functions why because there's two functions that i have to add onto the map so then every time that i go to each nft i can grab the value and apply that value to the stake so when the stake requires me to enter a token id the loop is going to provide that value automatically but why i need to do this because the stake and unstake functions will look for this and if this is and if i move those functions right so stake and unstake if i move those functions to the map but it's going to try to talk to the vault contract guess what it's going to be outside of the render which means it's not going to know what the value is because it was not rendered okay you see what i'm following me i think it's going to make more sense once i finish configuring it okay so let me go ahead and do that I just move all my functions inside the render. So inside render, below my constant that are pointing to the API calls, I am moving all my functions, okay? Now what I need to do, I need to make a little bit of changes right here. And I'm just going to, for sake of the video, I am just gonna copy the entire thing, okay? So I'm going to copy from here all the way here to the map. And I'm going to show you what I just did from here all the way to the map. And we're going to replace. And don't worry, I'm going to explain each thing right now. Okay. What have I just done? Okay. What I've done. I am now, if you go back, you're going to see that I did not have an eye. Why this is important? Because every time that I go over the api call for each token i need to call or record a key a key is basically the id of the moment it went to let's say token one so let's say the first time the api called red token one it's going to attach key one why that's important because when i do the stake function the stake function is going to be mapped to the token id which is going to be talking to the particular key. That's how it knows that that is the stake button for token one, and that is the stake button for token two, and that is the stake button for token three. You see where I'm going? It's gonna make, a, it's a little bit complex to understand at the beginning, but once you start practicing with it, you're going to realize, oh, now I know how they do it. Okay, so what am I grabbing here? I am grabbing the token dash ID. This is the API data from OpenSea. This is what I need to retrieve from OpenSea, the token ID. What is being appended? The assets. The assets is the call that I'm doing in the API call to OpenSea. If I scroll up, you should see this to be the variable that is set that is placed in this set state. So let me go up and there you go. You can see it here. So assets, it's calling the OpenC API call. I can use that information to then go and map each token ID onto the site and then display everything. After that, I will have all the information the same thing. I will be talking to IPFS and I am going to append token ID .png, and that's how I, I see the picture. Nothing else will change. What will change is the button. Now I am talking to stake it and unstake it. 
but the difference is those functions are now inside the map because I need to create a button unique per NFT. Why? Because each button will already have a pended token ID. So when I create the button for token for NFT one, it appends token ID one, it appends token ID two, and appends token ID three. And you're gonna see that right now. Okay. So let me go ahead. Let me save it. And let's see how that goes. Oh, what do we have here? Guess what I can do now? I can remove all this. I will leave this because I we haven't done the claim function like nested on the collection, but I have a, a surprise for that. On the next video, we're gonna do something very cool. Okay. Refresh, let me connect the wallet. Now, guess what? We have unique NFTs. Those two, they haven't populated because I think IPFS is not online, so that's why the pictures cannot be displayed. But those are the two most recent NFTs, and guess what? We got NFT 8, and we got the buttons for each one. Now, here's the, here, here comes the fun part. First of all, I'm gonna take this, because now we can use this for something else. I am thinking why don't we show this particular information, NFT balance, since so that will tell me the amount of NFTs that I have staked on the vault here, and then this will be sh to show the token rewards. Oh, okay. Okay, I have, I have a nice idea. So let me take just take this out of here because we no longer need this. Now you can stake literally the token itself or the NFT. From the NFT, I can literally stake it. What other good thing I do have? Now the NFT holder can look for his wallet or her wallet and locate the NFT that he owns. The thing is, I staked token eight. So I will not see my wallet. What I'm going to see is the staking smart contract holding my NFT. This is the address of the staking smart contract. What I'm going to do in the next video, I want to change this to display currently in vault. Mm. So what I can do is I can say, if you find this address, then display state in vault. So instead of me showing the address, it's going to show state in vault. And now we know that that NFT is inside the staking vault. So let me go ahead and remove this real quick. Let me go back here and I believe we can remove all this and we can just leave the staking vault name there. So I'm just gonna remove this, control S, let's go back and see. There you go, no longer there because now we have it here. Well now let's, let's run it, let's see how that goes. Connect wallet and now we want to unstake because guess what? My NFT number eight, which I bought at the beginning of the video and I staked, it's still in the vault. So I want to unstake it. Oh, no errors, no errors. Let's confirm. Mm, let's wait for that confirmation. And watch this. You see this? This is the staking smart contract but we have just unstaked the token and we're just going to refresh and see if the address changed and we got a confirmation it has been unstaked and now we need to wait for OpenSea to update because it's going to take a little bit of time but we should see this changing back to my wallet address this address right here because we have unstaked the nft okay and sure enough i should get some and to the rewards which i don't see and the reason why i don't see it it's because i haven't populated the token itself in the metamask wallet so i'm gonna do i'm just gonna copy my and to the rewards erc20 token into the asset so we can see the rewards okay and to the r custom and there you go we saw something and that's how much how we earn since we started the video and we staked the token, okay? So now, let me go down. Let me refresh one more time, see if we're lucky and we see that update. And there you go! Now it shows the owner of the wallet as the holder of the NFT. It's no longer in the vault. So on the next video, I should see currently in vault or staked, currently staked in vault. And then if you unstake, it should 
refresh and instead show your wallet address. Boom. When we leverage loops, arrays, and we make sure that we combine all those tools or all those functions onto the Web3 application, amazing things like that will happen. Okay, and there you have it. We got now a fully working Web3 NFT staking app, and now users can select their NFTs and decide to stake or unstake right on the NFT itself that is displayed on the application. There you go. That's what we want to do. We want to make this as seamless for the end user as possible. Okay. Awesome. On the next video, this one, it's going to be insane. We are going to modify the ERC 20 token rewards calculation. So how many tokens do we issue to that end user? And we want to make sure that we set this calculation based on how many tokens do you want to issue to the end user that is taking their, their NFTs, right? So let's say you want to issue 10 tokens a day, or you want to issue 20 tokens a day. Hey, you want to issue a token a day. We are going to create a calculation or we're going to modify the existing staking reward calculations that we have on the smart contract. So you can decide how much you want to give per day. And we're going to go over all the logic, you know, how does the math work? What is the block timestamp, which is used so we can calculate block rewards. So block staking rewards. And with that, we can actually create the function. Okay. So in the next video, I'm just going to go over the block reward calculations. Okay. Alrighty. I hope you liked this video. If you like my content, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.